Uh, my name is Chris Donald and uh, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be talking about cleaning a couple of different issues in our glazing room. Uh, first off, when I clean in here, I always do all the tabletops first. And the way I like to do it is I just use a sponge to wet it down and then a squeegee to actually squeegee the dirt right off of the tabletop and onto the floor. I do this first so that I can just mop up all of the mess that I'm squeegeeing under the floor. It's much more efficient than trying to constantly wipe and rinse and wipe and rinse. You'll see uh, this table, and as this dries, you'll even be able to see it. Filthy here from being sponged, clean here from being squeegeed. You can't get this dust off with just a sponge. Too dirty. All right. So um, when I clean underneath these tables and in this room, I start by pushing all of these carts halfway under the table. If there's people here working, this is going to allow them to keep blazing and keep working while I'm doing my cleaning. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. Um, one way is by using two different buckets, one with dirty water, one with clean water, so that you would basically get the filthy water off of the ground, rinse in here, then get clean water, put that on there. The way I like to do it is I use one bucket, but one bucket is going to get me about one half of one table's floor, and that's it. That's as far as it's going to go. Then I'm going to rinse that out and just get a new bucket of water. So frankly, I don't really care which way anyone uses as long as it's getting mopped. When I mop, I don't try and squeeze all the water out of the mop. These floors are porous because it's concrete, and it's useless to wring your mop out and then try and scrub the floor because the floor itself is absorbing so much water that the clay and the glaze are not going to liquefy, and you're not going to be able to get them off the floor. So you'll see that actually just ran out of water before I was even done scrubbing it. So it's actually better to start with a little more water than you would on like a traditional floor, like a tile floor or a laminate, where it's not porous. The biggest issue with cleaning these floors is getting this material to actually liquefy so that you can get it up off of the floor. So I'm going to hit the whole thing once, so I feel like it's all been liquefied. And then the second time that I hit it, I can wring out my mop. This way, I'm just picking up anything that's here that I didn't get with the first pass. So I would consider this pretty clean. The type of mop that I'm using is actually a rag mop rather than a rope mop. These are made for rough surfaces, like concrete floors, and they're more absorbent than a traditional mop head. They do wear out, but they last for a month or two before they die. Things like a sponge mop are just going to get utterly destroyed on a concrete floor like this. Almost no point in using a sponge mop. All right. Again, if I think it needs another pass, I don't wring out the extra water. And you'll even see that the water doesn't even want to soak into the floor right away. It just kind of sits there, and then it just absorbs it. And it's really important that this is getting done regularly. Glaze is far more dangerous even than the clay to have go airborne. And if you see a mess, on the floor, that means it's very bad. It's dirty even if it looks clean. So cleaning has nothing to do with whether or not you see the dirt. There is dust and dirt here. All the floors, all the surfaces need to be mopped and cleaned whether or not you see the dirt. All right, seeing the dirt, really bad. All right, then I would pull these back through do the other side underneath the table. When I go to do the carts, I like to take the buckets off the cart and stack them up two by two. That way, I'm not doing as much lifting. 
at least half of the buckets are staying more at waist level, is a lot safer. I'm going to use a sponge that, like the mop, has not been wrung out all the way. And then that way, this dry wood is going to absorb a lot of that water. I need enough water that it can kind of liquefy everything that's here. And then I can wipe that off with the next pass. So I'm going to do the bottom first. And these carts were washed about four days ago by me, so they're in pretty good shape. Then I can wring it out a little bit more for doing the top and side rails. All these drips need to go. Like I said, if you can see it, it's super dirty. If you can't see it, it's really dirty. It's always dirty. Don't worry about overcleaning. The day that overcleaning becomes an issue for us, it's going to be a good day. So, assume it needs to get washed and wash it. Before I put the buckets back, I'm going to clean off the lids. Depending on how much time I've got, I may also refresh the insides, scrape the lids clean, mix them up, make sure that they have the right amount of water. But if I'm a little pressed for time, I won't do the insides of the buckets. I'll stick to the outsides of the buckets. And I can put the next one on top of this one so it's less bending. With washing, you want to bend as little as possible. That's how you're going to wear yourself out, get injured. A lot of lifting in ceramics. So minimize it as much as you can. Use your arms. All right. You can see, even just giving it a quick once over, there's quite a bit we get splashed on the outside of these. As much as we can get rid of that each time, really helpful. I'm using a natural sponge. Uh, these are significantly better than most of the man-made sponges, but the man-made Detroit sponge and chamois sponges are really good, micropore. Most general tile sponges, it's going to be a little hard to clean him. Lift him up. Get it up there, you can see it. Clean this off too. But a commercial tile sponge isn't actually really good at removing most of this. So better to use a micro pour or a natural sponge. Alright. Starts clean. You can get pushed back under. Do the next one. So that's your basic um, cleaning for the glaze room. And we're going to have other cleaning videos. Uh, tune into those later. Thanks a lot.